Hello everyone, my name's Soul Keeper. This is Resident Evil 2, Claire A, Manual Aiming, No Save. A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation in the affair. The case was apparently closed thanks to the efforts of STARS members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished. Hello? Is anyone here? Hello? Uh, hello? <gasps> Look, I'm sorry I bothered you, okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you listening? Stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. There! Buckle up. Okay. What's going on? I arrived in town, and the whole place went Great. insane. The radio's out. You're a cop, right? Yeah, first day on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. I'll meet you there. Okay.
So obviously, this is the point where the game starts, and right off the bat, the game throws you into a pretty stressful situation. What I do here is I start running forward, and then I angle myself up around those zombos, and I can either run in front or back of that one, then I like to run off to the side there against that car, and then you want to keep off to the right there as you're running here, and then veer off to the right again as you change to that screen. That'll take you right to Kendo Shop. It's pretty tricky to do the first time, but not so bad after a while. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Don't shoot! I'm a human! Ooh. Sorry about that, babe. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I ain't got no clue, darling. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. So, yeah, we're not gonna talk to him any further. We're just gonna blow out of here and go out the door. If you go out the door, you don't get to see the scene where they crash through the window, which, it's whatever. And there goes Kendo. Bye, Kendo. <laughs> we don't really want his bow gun. We don't want his ammo either. He doesn't really have anything that's all that useful. If I run over here, they'll crash out the gate. And it's really hard to get around these guys. Sometimes you can get around them without taking a bite. Other times, it just doesn't work out in your favor. This time it didn't, but I run around this guy and go in the gate here. You can run around a lot of zombies. You don't have to actually fight everything. A lot of people don't realize this, but it is a survival horror game. You can just run away from most things. Some things you can't, obviously. You have to do boss fights and stuff, but most of the zombies here, you can get around them. There's a few instances that we're going to see where you can't do that. Now, if I'm fast enough here, you can get by those guys, and with a little bit of luck, I didn't have that luck, but if I keep over to the side here, I can get past these two guys. I don't know, getting off that dumpster sometimes is a problem, but fortunately we're almost at the police station here, but we're not out of trouble yet. We just run past these guys, keep over to the side away from them while they're getting up, and they won't be too much of a problem. And inside here, there's going to be one zombie on the ground that we're going to want to take a shot at. Obviously, because I don't have auto aim on, she's a little bit of an issue, and she gets a bite in on me. If I had auto aim on, it probably would have been a little easier, but that's the challenge, right? Manual aiming. The other guy, we just have to knock him down. We don't have to take him out or anything. And then we run past him. That's what we want to do. We just want to get in and get out of the bus. That kind of exemplifies a lot of the game here. So this guy, we're going to want to turn off to the side here, run forward a little bit, turn again, and then I'm going to run down and around, thread the needle a little bit, run around these guys, and that's actually pretty tricky to do, so don't feel bad if you get got the first time you do it, because, man, that's, that's hard to pull off. But you thread the needle during that section, you'll be okay. For some reason, I ran a little too far there. I don't know why I did that, but... Now we're going to go into the police station, and if you need an herb at this point, there is one off to the side here. I'm going to show you where it is. It is right there in those bushes. Take that, and you can heal yourself if you really need to. If you got here in full health, you may want to consider skipping it, or, you know, you may want to grab it too. I don't know. It's up to you. A lot of this is just, you know, playing this the way you want to play. If this is your first time, I really recommend going and grabbing everything. Obviously, I'm, I decided to heal here. So, first place we want to go, we want to go into the door over here. The second door, the single door. This is going to take us into... Uh, what do you call it? The bullpen, I guess? And here we meet Marvin. Hang in there. Are you the only officer left in the building? Uh, who are you? Claire. Claire Redfield. I'm looking for my brother, Chris. We lost contact with him over ten days ago. Chris, Jill, Barry. Every last Stars team member has disappeared. 
We should have listened to them. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like creatures in a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other STARS members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything, at the risk of their own lives, but no one believed them. <sighs> Are you okay? Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But... Just go. Okay. Just hang in there. I'll be back soon. We'll meet up with Marvin again later. We haven't seen the last of him quite yet. But it will be a long way getting over there. Let's go over to the computer now. That's where we have to use the card. There are some bullets on the counter there if you want to get them. Also, if you want to save your game, there's a typewriter with an ink ribbon. You can do that if you really want to, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not saving. Using the computer and the key card, or the ID card, unlocks the doors on either side of the police station. We want to go through the double doors, and inside here is going to be an item box. And you can use that to drop your items, obviously, but uh, I don't really need to at this point. I really don't have that much. We're going to run around, and in here is going to be a first aid spray that you may want to get, you may not. It depends if you want the best rating. If you use first aid sprays, you're not going to get the best rating. Next hallway is one that we're going to want to be a little careful in. If you've ever played this before, you know what I'm talking about, because we meet a very special enemy in here. Run forward, run around the corner, and here's the cutscene. <gasps> yeah, he's a very special boy, but what you want to do is just all ass run forward around him. Don't wait, just run. You'll have enough clearance to do it. You don't have to be afraid. If you really want to, you can go back and get that herb. Um, we'll be coming back this way anyway, so you can just grab it on the way back. I recommend doing that, because it's going to save some time in the long run. This is going to be a tricky hallway. What we want to do is run forward, and then veer off to the side there, run forward, and you can just bypass all those zombos very easily. It looks harder than it really is. There's definitely some harder things that we're going to be doing during the course of this. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you get some, sometimes you don't. This puzzle here, you can either complete it right now, or you can just complete one half of it. Push this forward a little bit, and then push it off to the other side. The faces have to be facing forward they can't be facing the wall so you gotta bring this red statue over to the side here and then you gotta take that blue statue and push it over to the other side and once you put it on that square the tile on the floor that is different from all the others that is how you know you're gonna have that uh, puzzle solved we need to go to the stars office now not gonna be a lot in here but there's gonna be a very important key item go to the desk straight forward and look at a file and there will be an emblem underneath it. Here you find Chris's diary. Don't need to read that, because reading's for nerds. We're going to take that unicorn medal, and we're going to go back out to the front lobby, or the foyer. Very important here is a grenade launcher in the cabinet. You are going to want that. Unless you are doing some sort of challenge or whatever, I really recommend taking the grenade launcher. That is effectively Claire's shotgun. What the grenade launcher is to Claire is what the shotgun and, frankly, the magnum is to Leon. So, on our way back, 
if you didn't already do this, let's push this statue in the place on the other side, and we'll take the ruby, and we'll be on our merry way back down the stairs, because we gotta backtrack all the way back to the foyer. Isn't that fun? <laughs> well, it's Resident Evil, guys, so, you know, there is uh, quite a bit of backtracking in this. A lot less backtracking in Resident Evil 3, funny enough. And even less in Resident Evil 4. But 1 and 2, boy, they got a lot of backtracking. I'm having some trouble here getting this jewel because... Uh, you, they, it won't let you pick it up from the side. You have to pick it up from the front. I tried picking it up from the side and it just was not letting me have it. Going down the stairs here, we're going to encounter the same room that we did before with all the zombos. What you would like, what you want to do is wait a second before you go. Because those zombos are going to walk around and then once that guy clears the wall there, you have all the room you need to just run back into that room where you came from. Don't run to the far room, we still need the diamond key. And in this hallway, be careful here because the jazz hands are going to pop through the window. Boom, there they are. And if they grab you, well, it's going to do some damage. Hug the wall. Don't go near them. Just keep running. And right here, we're going to go back into the first liquor hallway. Here you can grab the herb if you really need it. And I'm going to grab it because, obviously, it's a little bit more convenient to grab at this point. You can run through this hallway. And it depends how much you want to do it. I wouldn't recommend running until you're about on par with where the liquor is there because once you're there you can pretty safely run if you start running immediately it gets a little hairier and if you have enough items here you're going to be slightly over encumbered i would recommend just dropping off like most of your weapons here i dropped off everything except for the grenade launcher because the grenade launcher is going to be the weapon that we're going to use for most of this Honestly, you're not going to be needing the gun all that much. You can use it if you want to, but I don't know that you really need it all that badly. Put the unicorn medallion right here, and you will get a key. You need that key. It's very important. Once we have that key, that is the spade key. We're going to go all the way back to the star's room hallway. And I know that seems... Uh, like a lot. It's a lot of backtracking. Uh, yeah, it is. But that's what we have to do here in Resident Evil 2. So, that's what we're going to do. And we're just going to be very, very careful with that liquor hallway again. Because you don't want to take too many unnecessary risks if you can help it. Try to stay safe. Uh, you can run. A lot of people do run. But if you're just starting to learn to play the game... And even if you're an experienced player, I, I don't recommend taking too many unnecessary risks if you can help it. But anyway, once you know where he is, you can start running. So get a run if you have the clearance. That's the takeaway here. There's not going to be any jazz hands in this hallway on the way back, so you can just run to your heart's content. But there will be zombies over here. Again, run to the stairs. Run forward. And then veer off to the side here, run forward again, and then go to the stairs, and you are golden. You got past those zombos. That's uh, pretty scary. It's, it's a little scary to do the first time, but after you do it a few times, you get used to it. Now, going through this door back in this hallway, there will be some zombies, so watch out. This is where we meet Sherry. We're really not going to do anything with this guy. We're kind of just going to let him be who he is. But watch out for him and run behind him. Uh, sometimes these zombies have a tendency to move faster than you think they do. So, yeah, be careful. And try to run behind them whenever you can. Leon! Claire, you made it! Yeah. Have you seen a little girl around here? Yeah, you just missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. 
Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. There's ammo down that hallway if you want to get it. It's on a shelf. Here in this drawer there's going to be some flame rounds, so we very much want to use the lockpick. Those flame rounds are going to be extremely useful. I didn't go down that hallway there because it's just going to add more time and, I don't know, every second tends to count if you want to move as fast as possible. There's a lot of time I could still shave off of this, but uh, I thought that that would be a good place to start is just by bypassing the hallway. When you run around the balcony there, go all the way here and bust through the floor and then run forward and press the button. The shelves that you want to mess with are the two on the left. Move them both over to the right, and then that little, what do you call it, safe inside the place where you just dropped in will be unlocked and you can grab the key item that you need, the plate. Run back in there, boom, there it is, check it out. It's unlocked, go and grab that plate. We're going to need three of those to unlock the room, the secret room, in the chief's office. And that's the first piece of the puzzle, obviously. Now once you have that, run this way. There is a red herb over here that you can use to combine with the green herb if you have one in your inventory. That is going to give you a full heal. And if you're trying not to use first aid sprays during the course of this, that's a big help. Because, well, obviously it's a full heal. Once you're out here in this balcony, be careful. There is a zombie off to the side of that door. Run over this way and hug the railing because that's going to allow you to get past that zombie pretty easily. The emergency ladder is a shortcut to the first floor, which we will be using a little bit. Not a lot, but we will be using it occasionally. Run over this way and watch out for this zombie that's going to be right in front of you. You may want to just take him out entirely because he's a bit of a problem. Helps if you aim at him, though. Obviously, my manual aim was getting the better of me. This little nook here is very useful because you can use this to draw a zombie in and then once he's close enough you can run out of it and then you have the clearance to run around him. Whenever you can run around a zombie it's better than just taking him out because taking him out takes time, it takes ammo, precious ammo that you need for bosses. In here there's a lighter on that sofa, you really need to have that. Also use the item box, put the plate back in your inventory. You don't need the flame rounds right now, but you need pretty much every other item that you see in my inventory here. We're going to blow through and go through this door here, and on we go to the next section of the game. So, there's going to be zombies over here, or a zombie. I, I don't think I would recommend taking this one out. I took him out just... I, I don't know why I took him out, to be honest. That's weird. Well, I, I have no idea why I did that. I think I was trying to consider my options here for which part, which route I wanted to take to go through next. That's why I went back in this room here. And this is one part that if I did this again, I wouldn't do this. I would just go straight out that door off to the side here. This is going to take us to the crow hallway, this door. And one thing that we have to do is we have to put out the fire where that helicopter is. Okay, so we're just going to run all the way down this crow hallway. And don't stop. No matter what, don't stop. If you stop, the crows are going to give you a, a hassle. Do not stop. Do not be afraid. Just run to the door. And if you get to that door, you're going to be okay. We're going to have to run through there... Not too many times, honestly. No, not, not all that much. We only need to run through here the once. Down the stairs here, there will be some zombies that are going to block your way. What you want to do is go hug the wall over here, run forward, and then when that street lamp is in your way, curve around it. Keep hugging the wall, give them a wide berth. What you may want to do here is if they crowd you, you can run around them. You will have the clearance if you run to the other side and hug the other railing. Go inside this door here and there will be the valve handle that you need to put out the fire here and for the sewer. It's behind this chair here. There's a bow gun too if you really want it, but I don't recommend taking it. It's really not that useful of a weapon. The valve handle though we absolutely need, so we'll take that. You could also save if you feel like it. If you feel like you need it, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Obviously if this is your first time, maybe you want to. I don't know. You play it your way. 
you can hug the wall to run, run behind that guy, but it's, it's pretty open, so you really don't have to. If she gets in front of the stairs, you can wait it out and see if maybe she'll follow you. But if she's kind of just staying there, you can do what I did and just, you know, use the grenades on her. She's really getting in the way here and, you know, she's eating up time. Precious time. So, that's one point where I say, go ahead and take them out. If they're getting in your way, that's the point where you just want to take them out. So, go over to this valve here and use the valve handle. This is going to use the water tower on the helicopter and that's going to put the fire out. There's nothing in the helicopter except for handgun ammo, so unless you just want bullets for some reason, you don't need to interact with a helicopter or any more than this. After this, just go in the door, and yeah, let's go back through the crow hallway, man. Again, we will need the valve handle for later, so that's why it's still in your inventory. I checked this just to make sure there wasn't something useful. Yeah, you see that? Handgun ammo. So, that's another thing that, if I did this again, I would just cut that out. Nothing useful there. <laughs> yeah, nothing useful. Look at me talking tough. Oh, nothing useful. No handgun bullets for me. When you run through this hallway, just run back through the door that you came in. We're going to be going to the end of the hallway. And there is a key item that we need in there. curious sound that is. Well, Chief's a weird guy. We'll meet him in a little while. When you come in here, you can deposit one of the rubies if you have one or both of them. If you do, you're going to get a key item, but most importantly, there's going to be a key here. We do have the lighter at this point. It's kind of a... I'm not sure whether it's faster to go and use the lighter to get the other jewel, or whether... It's faster to make a pit stop in here. Because what we could have done is gone down the stairs over in the crow hallway, and we could have gone through you know, the office, the briefing room. Well, not the briefing room. It's, it's more of like another bullpen, pretty much. Yeah. We're going to go there now. We're going to go down this outside stairwell. When you interact with this door from the crow hallway, it unlocks it. There will be some herbs out here, you can grab those, you may want them. I decided to take them because, eh, you never know when you're going to need some. A lot of times, you, you, with the best intentions, you just, you just take a bite. And, well, when that happens, eh, nothing, it, nothing good comes of it. You can combine them to make a super herb if you really want to, or you can keep them separate. Sometimes you want to have a separate one for when you find a red herb. But, me, I decided to make super herb. So, we're going to go through here, and what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to get a little silly here, I think. We're going to run through this room over here. And what I recommend doing is hugging the right. You can also just run... Well, I recommend just hugging the right. It's easier. It's safer, I think. And this is going to take us into a very stressful hallway. I don't know that I would recommend going that way quite yet. Although, we are going to use the diamond key. But the point is, we need to get the club key before we do. Otherwise, that trip will be for nothing. What we do need to do is go through here with our diamond key. And... Guess what? We're going through the liquor hallway yet again, because we just can't help ourselves. I recommend putting away the valve handle at this point. Uh, I recommend putting away an extra heal if you don't need it, because you don't need two heals in your inventory. That one key, we're going to need to go into the door in the liquor hallway. There's a key item in here. We need to get the crank at this point. And the crank in Resident Evil 2 Original is going to be in this hallway right here. This door right here, we're gonna go in here. And now that discards the key. So that's why we did it. It saves a little bit of inventory for us, fortunately. Push these stairs forward and the crank is gonna be on top of that shelf right there. 
it's really easy to do. You just push it forward, go up, climb up and grab the crank, and yeah, you're done there. Nothing else in this room. Actually, I don't think there is. A lot of stuff in Resident Evil 2 is kind of hidden, so... You might want to look around a little bit, maybe look at a guide or something that someone's written. Because I don't know off the top of my head if there's anything else in there. I don't think there is, but... Hmm, might want to look sometime. Anyway, you know what to do in this hallway. Just run forward, because there's no way he's going to be able to grab you as long as you don't dilly-dally. That's kind of the thing about Ari. As long as you don't dilly-dally, a lot of the time you're going to be okay. This time, going through the hallway, we want to go into the briefing room, because when we run back into the back room, we can find a painting with a fireplace, and we want to light that fireplace on fire. What that will do is burn the painting, and we will find another ruby. That is something else we're going to need for that room that's over by the chief's office. Or by the helicopter in that hallway. There's some bullets over against those chairs over there if you want to grab them. I'm not going to grab them, but if you need them, they're there. FYI. Now that we have that, we can just keep going the way we were going. And we're going to go into a different door this time. We're going into the same hallway where those zombos are and that staircase is, but this time we're going to go to the evidence room. So we're going to turn to the side here and we're going to watch out for her. If she has her back turned, it's safe to go. Be very careful and then go in here and there's going to be a bunch of zombies in here, so try to freak out. If you have grenade rounds, this is an excellent time to use them. Try to avoid that guy. What we want to do is interact with this... Um, the safe right here because she can pick the lock and she can get the plastic explosive and once you have that just go to this door here and get out of there for some reason it just wasn't letting me leave she'll unlock it and you'll be good to go now in here there's going to be zombies that are going to be flanking well actually no that's the v run i'm sorry there's not going to be any zombies in here except for marvin thankfully that actually makes things a lot easier and if you took a bite, you can use that herb over there. So, if you're fast enough, you can turn away from Marvin, but it's actually pretty tough to do. You can back up and get out of there, or you can take the bite and push him back. But regardless of what you do, you have to grab the detonator. In this case, sometimes it's just faster to take the bite. So, it's probably for the best that we just took the bite there. Well, now that we have the explosive, we're going to use the emergency ladder and go upstairs. And we're going to go back to that hallway where the helicopter crashed. And also where we're going to use this second ruby. Again, we've got this sub over here that's going to kind of be in the way. And fortunately, he's got enough clearance for us that we can just kind of run off to the side here and get in that door. He's all the way over there, and he's not going to get to us for a long time. We don't have to wait for him. We can just run off to the side there, hug the wall, and we have the clearance to do what we need to do. A lot of Resident Evil 2 is just looking for clearance. And it's easier said than done at times, but it's not so bad. What I'm doing here is I'm going into this room first to get the key item that I need. I'm going to go over here and place the other ruby so that I can get one piece of the next tablet. It's only half of it. It's kind of curious that all the rest of them are in one piece except for this one. I guess they do that because Leon has four plugs but they only had the three stones so they figure, eh, we'll divvy the two of them up. Or we'll divvy the one up. Take the detonator, put it on the door there, and that's how we're going to get into that hallway. Be sure that you combine the detonator with the explosive and that'll take care of things. Inside this we're going to meet a very curious character. I wanted to see if I could run around to the other side of the room without having to do the cutscene with him, but no, he's going to make us do the cutscene. You get a different cutscene depending on which, whether you go to his desk or not. Oh, 
I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were another one of those zombies. Are you Chief Irons? Yes, that's me. And just who are you? No, don't bother telling me. It makes no difference. You'll end up just like all the others. That's the mayor's daughter. I was told to look after her, but I failed miserably. Just look at her. She was a true beauty. Her skin nothing short of perfection. But it will soon putrefy and she will turn into a zombie within the hour like all the others. There must be some way to stop it. In a manner of speaking, there is. Either by putting a bullet through her brain, or by decapitating her completely. And to think that taxidermy used to be my hobby. But no longer. Please, I'd really like to be alone now. Well, while he stews over what he just did, we're going to go into this room. Nothing suspicious about the chief at all, right? <laughs> He's kind of a really creepy guy in every game he appears in. All two of them. Run to the end of this hallway, go to this other door. There's a lot of halls to run through here. Anyway, turn around this here after you run forward. You're gonna hear footsteps. That's just Sherry running through here. Turn the light on, and there she is. Wait, let me go. Easy, easy there. I'm not a zombie. You're safe now. <laughs> Leon, come in. I found the girl and I've cleared the wreckage that was blocking the corridor. Got it. My name's Claire. What's yours? Sherry. Do you know where your parents are? They both work at the Umbrella Chemical Plant, near the city limits. The chemical plant? Then what are you doing here? My mom called and told me to go to the police station because it was too dangerous to stay at home. From the look of things, I'd say she was probably right, but it's dangerous here as well. You'd better come with me. But there's something out there. I don't know what it is, but I saw it. Much larger than any of those zombies. And it's coming after me. What was that? That's what I was telling you about. It's here. Sherry, wait! So, if you look at the chest in the back of the room, there should be a first aid spray in there. If you need it, you can take it. I didn't really need it all that badly here, so I didn't bother. Keep running back the way we came into the chief's office. The chest actually has the crank on the B run, FYI, there. When we come back in this room here, there will be a key item that we need, so be sure you look at the chief's desk. It also shows you when we come back in here. See the glimmer? Chief? Go over there and take the key. This is the heart key. We're going to need that to go downstairs into the interrogation room after we go back into, well, one of the riskiest hallways in all of Resident Evil. Now we have this, we're just going to go all the way back downstairs. And this is going to be a doozy. We're going to take the hallway that's going to, well, we'll take the crow hallway. And we're going to go down the outside staircase, we're going to go back down into that one, I guess, secondary bullpen? I don't know what to call that particular room. I, I'm not sure. But anyway, go down here, and once you go in there, you're just going to run straight forward. Straight forward. And once you do that, once you do that, 
it's going to discard the key immediately. This is going to take us to the basement. If I take the herbs here, we'll be able to mix them together if we really want to, and honestly we probably should because we've got two of them and we only have eight inventory slots. We're only going to have 18, excuse me, eight inventory slots for the duration of the run. You can get a side pack down here, but you know, that takes a little bit more time and with us only really using the grenade launcher, it seems a little superfluous. So, running around these dogs here, dogs, you kind of have to use a serpentine pattern when you run around them. Like, uh, the best way to probably deal with them is to run diagonally. There's a red herb right there, but I don't really have anything to mix it with. Also, I need an inventory slot. Although, if I am over encumbered, I can use the item room up here and its item box to get rid of anything. We need to go in the item, or excuse me, the save room here, and then we need to go right back out, and then Sherry will be waiting for us outside. And then we're going to take control of Sherry. Sherry, I've been looking everywhere for you. I was so worried. We've got to go now, honey, okay? If we stay here, that monster will find us. Let's go. No! I won't! What's the matter? <laughs> Don't you trust me? It's not that, Claire. It's because of my daddy. He's over there. I heard him call my name. Daddy must have been attacked by the monsters. I have to help him. Wait, Sherry, don't go alone. Sherry, Sherry! So run right toward the elevator once you take control of Sherry. This section is painfully easy. This is really so much easier than playing Sherry's section in the RE2 remake. A lot different, too. There's gonna be a dog out here. You wanna go up against the wall and try to avoid it. Uh, I would recommend using a serpentine pattern again, but it can be difficult to do because it's kinda of hard to see your location from that angle. Sometimes the camera angles really work against you in this. When you enter this room here, after running straight across from the elevator, there's going to be boxes down here that you have to move forward, and I recommend just pushing them far enough. Like, you don't have to push them all the way up against the wall, you just have to get them mostly there. Like, that far is fine. And then you have to climb up and go over and do the next one and push it over, and then you have to push the other one kind of roughly in the place. I accidentally climbed up here. I accidentally hit the action button while I was pushing, and, well, you know, if you do that, that happens. If you're lucky while you're climbing with Sherry, she'll only have to bring her leg up once. It's kind of RNG whether she's going to bring her leg up twice, but if she does bring it up twice, it does use a little bit more time. It's not like a big loss or anything for anyone who's trying to do a fast run of this, but... Yeah, it, it just is what it is. So you have to grin and bear it. Like, right there, there. That's that's her leg falling down. That happens sometimes. All right, so use the lever there, bring the water up, and notice that when we do that, the boxes kind of just magically go into place. And yeah, that's pretty much what we can expect. That's exactly what we want, actually, because that's less work for us. And now the only thing that we absolutely have to grab here is the key on this shelf. It's kind of hard to see, but the key is there. That's the club key that we need. There's also grenade rounds if we go back to another room on the other side of this area. But it's such... It's so out of the way here that it's not worth it. Just go back to the elevator. Run past the dog. Go back to the elevator. And let's get out of here. It's actually really hard to avoid hits from a dog when you're Sherry. I don't know why, but I always have a hard time not getting hit by that dog. I just chalk it up to the camera angle because, like I say, sometimes it's hard to tell where you are. Claire! Are you there? 
Sherry, are you okay? Did you find your dad? Yes, I'm okay. But I couldn't find him. But I did find something else for you. Here! Thanks, sweetie. Now, why don't you come over here? I want you to stay with me. Claire! I can't reach the ventilation hole anymore. But don't worry, I'll find another way. I can take care of myself. Wait, Sherry, come back. Sherry! Sherry! Well, off she goes. That's the key that we need. Now we're going to go back to that hallway. Well, we're going to go back to the hallway that is very dangerous. The one that has all the zombies in it that we kind of just blew past. But anyway, we're going to run past this dog here. Watch out because there's two dogs here. So, yeah, try not to get hit. Easier said than done, but try to serpentine your way through it. And then there's going to be a liquor inside here, so be very careful. Watch yourself. I kind of just ran forward right into him. You may want to veer to... Uh, you may want to veer right when you're running past him. Because a lot of times if you veer off the one side as opposed to, you know, just straight forward, a lot of times he won't be able to get a swipe in on you. There is some ammo in this room here, and we can use that new club key to open this door. There's only one thing inside here that we need, we absolutely want, there are acid rounds. And because I'm in caution, yellow caution, I decided to use that herb mix that we picked up earlier. There's acid rounds there, we want those, you want those if you're playing as Claire. You don't have to pick them up I guess, but honestly this run is going to be a lot harder if you don't pick these up. Because you really don't get that many acid rounds in Resident Evil 2 Original. Resident Evil 2, 1998. You get maybe three stacks of them, I want to say. You get, yeah, something like that. You don't get that many, and they're very useful against the first and third bosses. So, after this, we're going to run back through here and out into this hallway. And when we get out here... Watch yourself, because there's going to be Zombos, a lot of them. And the way that we're going to deal with this is just by gritting our teeth and running into them. Yeah. And if we push enough of them back, well, that should take care of most of them. Well, we're taking a lot of bites here, so it's not working out super good. But if you have enough of a path, you can grab the herb back here, and that'll bring you back into fine to take a little bit of the edge off of what just happened there. You can use some grenades if you want to, to bring them down, to clear the hallway a little bit. It's a really tough hallway to get past, so I understand if you have to heal. Like, even I had to heal a little bit. This hallway can get pretty hairy. I I try to find the clearance to get past that guy, but eh, it just, it just isn't really happening. I don't really have the grenades to spare, but I do use a grenade eventually on one of these zombos to clear the hallway and there it is sometimes sometimes you just have to make a few concessions and i don't recommend using the acid rounds if you can help it but if you have to yeah go ahead and do it this is the first room we're going to enter after getting those keys fortunately uh we're going to have this tile piece in here that's another piece of the puzzle that we need to get into the chief's office Unfortunately, I took a hit there from that liquor. Usually that doesn't happen. What I recommend doing is running up against the window so that his back is to you when you run through there. And if that's the case, it's going to make it a little easier to get through. And I thought that I had the clearance here. I was thinking about using a acid round. But I ultimately didn't because I wanted to save the ammo, and then I thought I had the clearance, and no, I really did not. What I recommend doing there is trying to get him so his back is turned to you. Stand up against the wall and see if he walks and follows you, and then run behind him. Now, I almost ran right into that liquor there, and what I recommend doing here is just waiting it out. With liquors, they can't really 
see you. They don't see you. They're blind. And what happens when they track you is that they hear you. But if you're far enough away from them, if you've got like a few feet there between you and them, they can't they, they don't hear you. Go over here and light this, and then we're going to do three, one, two. Or excuse me, two, three, one, rather. I don't know why I thought it was three, one, two, but it's two, three, one. That's my bad. After you do that, that cog will drop, and the liquor will still be over on the other side of the room. And I recommend just walking it out, waiting, because the liquor can be a handful. He's... They, they do a lot of damage. You don't want to play around with these guys if you can help it. Don't take unnecessary risk if you don't really have to, or unless you're just feeling bold about it. As soon as you're close enough to the door that you can make a bolt for it, go ahead and do that. Right about now is when you have the clearance, and that's when I ran. By the time he turns around and starts doing his thing, he's not going to be able to get you. So, FYI, that's how you do that. That guy, if his back is turned, you can run right past him. There will be another guy over here. See if you can get around him. Yeah, you've got the clearance there. If he is over that one side, and we can use an acid round to get rid of this guy. Because he's really getting all up in my chili, and I like my chili without him in it, thank you. So out here, this can be a bit of a dumpster fire, but what we're going to do is we're going to run around. You actually have a lot of clearance to get through there, and there will probably be only like one zombie in the way. I'm using a lot of acid around, excuse me, acid rounds here to get through this, which probably isn't the best thing. If I did this again, I might use some flame rounds or something to try and minimize the amount of acid rounds that I'm pulling out on these zombos, because what I'm doing right right there was way too much. Anyway, go up the ladder here, and we're almost ready to enter the chief's office. Now, right up here, there's going to be a liquor. Uh, I would recommend... I tried to use an acid round there, that really didn't work. What I would recommend doing is running around behind him, and then running over to the library like I just did. Because if I run around behind him, he's going to have to turn around, and it's going to be hard for him to pull it off. I think that might be a good strat. It might not be, but I might try it again sometime and see if it works. So, right here, this cutscene in that one hallway to the basement, there's going to be a bunch of zombos pouring in through the windows. Also, they're going to be pouring in through the windows over in that liquor hallway, the first one. We don't have to worry about that, because we're not going back there. We're never going to go in those hallways ever again, so that cutscene is kind of just whatever. Nobody cares at this point. They're being all dramatic for nothing. If we've done everything that, you know, I've shown you up to this point, there's no reason for us to go back in those hallways. So, right here, this guy is really, really hard to get past. And, yeah, more than likely, probably just going to take a hit from him, unless... Somehow you find some clearance. It's hard. It's really hard to find though Use the handle here on this uh, Hole in the wall that you see that'll bring the stairs down then once we go upstairs We'll be able to use the cog on the machine and That will give us the last piece that we need before we fight our first boss fight Run around over here, and there's the machine Right about this spot here when the camera angle changes is when you should use the cog Okay, that's going to open up a door off to the side that's going to have this piece in it, and that's going to be the other piece of our blue tile. If you're playing as Leon, Leon actually jumps down the chute over into the offices, but we're... Claire does not do that, so we're going to go back the way we came. And this is actually a little bit more dangerous because we have to deal with the liquor out there, again. <laughs> Kind of nice when you're playing as Leon because you can just bypass all that and go straight to the boss, you know, straight to the boss. But you know, you don't have that option here. So what we can do here is just kind of follow him as he's crawling. Uh, it's it's a little touch and go. 
you might be able to run past him, but odds are he'll probably take a swipe. If a good rule of thumb here for the liquor is you can kind of just nudge your way past him. If he bunches up, if he raises up a little bit, that's your indication that you should start running. You should start running now because he knows you're there and he's going to do attack. But if he doesn't do that, if he just keeps crawling, he doesn't know you're there. So you could use that to your advantage. Look for those cues. Those visual cues. This guy is going to be crawling again toward you know, toward you. Now it's kind of hard here to decide if you got the clearance to run past him. Because he's kind of, you know, it feels like he's kind of all over the place. He's all over the floor. And I thought I could get past him there and I couldn't. I ran over, if I went over to the other side I think that it would have done it. I'm thinking that he uses his, it kind of looks like he uses his right hand to swipe. At least that's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna have to try that again sometime and see if that's the case. So right here at the item box we want to fetch the last stone. What we need here for this next fight is we need our heals. You want at least one heal. You don't really need that many heals, but you want a heal. You can leave the key behind because you're not going to need it anymore. No, you're not going to need that key any longer. You can leave the lighter. Uh, you'll need the grenade launcher. You might want to bring the gun just for backup. And you're going to want to, excuse me, you're going to want to take the valve handle because we will be using that in the sewer. So have that in your inventory. Now run all the way over to this hallway where the chief's office is. And once we go in there, we're going to go over behind his desk remove the painting, and place the stones. Claire! Sherry, you're okay. I'm glad to see you're safe, Claire. This painting over here behind his desk, that's what we're looking for. This weird, like... I don't even know what you call it, what type of painting that is. It's... something really... I don't know. But anyway, move it, place the stones, and that's going to open up a secret passage. Boom, there it is. Go to the elevator. You have to use it twice. Claire! I'm going down there. Stay here and wait for me, okay? Sherry is going to wait here, so you're going to have to come back for her. FYI on that one. But take the elevator down, and there's going to be a, a there's this there's that cutscene back there. There's going to be another cutscene over here. A lot of cutscenes in this, and that kind of adds to a lot of the time that we see in the video. Ah! Help me! Ah! Oh! Ah! It's kind of funny that that happens as we're going into this corridor here, because, like, he gets attacked and, well, impregnated, and he wakes up all while she's going down this hallway, right? <laughs> so you've made it this far. Not bad, girl. But I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Calm down, Chief. What happened? Shut up! You couldn't possibly understand what's happened. Those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. How could they do that to me after everything I've done for them? So it's true. You have been working with Umbrella. Then you must know about the G-Virus. What is it? Tell me! If you must it's the agent that can turn humans into the ultimate bio-weapons. Superior to the T-Virus in every way. Dr. William Birkin is the genius behind the project. William Birkin? I'm sure you've already seen his little girl running around here somewhere. Sherry, 
isn't it? In case you haven't already figured it out, the monster that's been tearing my precinct apart is yet another product of the G-Virus. An ultimate bio-weapon. Umbrella must be trying to cover its tracks. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me. Oh, but just can't take the pain. Well, there's the first boss. Not the chief, the thing that just came out of him. On the shelf over here is the one thing we can pick up in this room, acid rounds, and we 100% need those, because that's what we're going to fight the boss with. If you're ready, go ahead and go down the ladder, and let's go meet what just popped out of the chief there. Couldn't happen to a better guy, really. What a weirdo. Run forward, and get yourself ready, because this is an interesting fight. So, this is the spitter. And what you have to do is, if you're doing manual aim like me, you, you, she's facing forward, but she's not aimed quite right. You need to turn her over a little bit further to, a little bit further to the side, because the, the acid round, as you saw, just went right over it. So that's three acid rounds, four, five, after five rounds, that's enough. You, you only have to hit him with five rounds. I fired seven rounds, and so I wasted two rounds. That's, well, that's my bad. But five rounds and he'll go down. And make sure they hit their mark. If they go completely over him like, you know, what you saw there, I mean, that's a little bit of a problem. But we do have to aim ourselves a little bit more to the left on the d-pad than we think that we would and that will get her to finally hit him with that rock or excuse me not rocket launcher but grenade launcher after we're done we have to go back up and get sherry and then once we see the cutscene with sherry we just head right back down the elevator and then we go back to the platform where the boss was and there'll be a ladder at the very end of it claire you came back the man who developed the G-Virus is actually her father. What's wrong, Claire? It's nothing. But I think I found a way out of here. We should be able to find some place safe if we can just make it out of town. But... Don't worry, I'll protect you. I promise. But you have to make sure you don't leave my side. Leon, are you still there? We're leaving. Are you crazy? The streets are still crawling with zombies. It'll be all right, trust me. We found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire! Claire! Wait, wait! So, for the next part, I want to make sure that I'm using my gun. This is like the only other time I'm going to use my gun during the entire run, because... We are going to meet the alligator down in the sewers. The sewers in Resident Evil Original are much easier to deal with. It's much shorter than the sewers in Resident Evil 2 Remake. In the remake, it's kind of a headache. It's kind of hard to deal with. Specifically because of the organ trail that everyone knows and loves from that remake. But... This one, it's borderline trivial, it's so easy. It's its cool to see, but you really don't spend that much time down in here. When you're running with Sherry, you may notice that you can't really run all that far. She runs much slower than Claire does. And because of that, you have to stop periodically to let Sherry catch up. If you run too far, Sherry will do what Ashley does in RE4 Remake and just squat down and wait. And, no, well, that's no good. Fortunately, we do not spend that much time with Sherry. We are frequently... Come on, let's get out of here. We are frequently apart from her.
When Sherry falls down into this vent, we're able to play as her again. It's kind of cool that you're able to play as Sherry for the second time, two times in one game. It's one of those things you kind of miss from the remake, where you only get to play as her once, and I don't think it's anywhere near as enjoyable as this is. So what we want to do, if you go over here, you'll see that there's grenade rounds on this shelf, but Sherry can't reach them, so don't, don't bother with those. Immediately just go to the vent. In fact, if I record this again, I'll just immediately go to the vent, because that's the way. There's bugs in here that will you know, circle around and attack her. Just try to get through them. It's really kind of difficult because they kind of all come for you. They spam you a lot, but it's nothing really to worry about. Just shrug them off and get to the other side of the vent. And after you do that, we're pretty much almost there. Pick up the medallion on the ground and we're done with this section. We're going to go back to clear now. sounded nasty as hell. William, you're kind of gross, dude. Well, he gets everything that he's got coming to him. Since we are playing on an original PlayStation 1 disc, sometimes it takes a moment for things to load properly. And I am playing on a PlayStation 2 console here, so even though the load times are a little faster, it's a 20-something year old game, a 25 year old game at this point, so it's not perfect. One of these blue herbs will be useful just in case we run into some problems later over in the lab, because you can get poisoned by a number of things over there. But it's helpful to have one. We can just throw it in the old inventory box over here, and we'll mostly be fine. So, I've already got most things that I need, but we do want to check the locker for another heal if you feel like you need it. And, well, personally, I felt like I needed another heal to have on hand. When you're playing no save like this, you kind of want to, you know, hedge your bets with as many heals as you can. <laughs> There's also some bullets in the bag over here that, if you need bullets, you can go ahead and take them. Uh, I don't know why I bothered. I really don't need them because, I mean, I'm only going to use my gun this one time. I guess I just wanted to, you know, hedge my bets. But this does require me to go back to the item box and deposit those and, you know. Little things like that that add up over the course of the time playing this. After we're done though, we can go back to the elevator, or go over to the elevator rather, and we're gonna go down. Because now we're going to enter the sewers proper. Or at least we're gonna enter the area where we need to go next. Take a right at that fork there. That's going to take us into this door, which is going to have, well, an all too familiar area here. Down this way, there will be some grenade rounds, and you don't have to go this way to get them, but you may want to get some. Flame rounds, again, are going to be very, very useful. You may want them, although we do have some in our inventory, so it's not, like, absolutely necessary. If you're going to have flame rounds now, you're going to have flame rounds later when we pick some up over before the second boss fight. So, it's not absolutely essential, it's just something that's nice to have. But, overall I think I'm probably glad that I picked them up. I think I'll try running this without picking them up and see how it goes at some point. Anyway, run through this room here and just keep going, don't let the spiders hit you, because, you know, poison. We go through these double doors. Who are you? Oh, I see. Another spy sent by Umbrella, right? Let me guess. You're here to steal my husband's G virus, aren't you? You are tenacious, I'll give you that. Husband? 
Then you must be Annette. Sherry's mother? What? Sherry's wandering around alone in the sewers. You have to help me find her. That's impossible. I told her to go to the police station. What's she doing here? William will be after her. William? That's right. The creature that's been causing all this destruction is none other than my own husband. This way. It's sheer perfection. My precious G-Virus. No one will ever take you away from me. There he is. So you finally come. Doctor, we're here to collect the G-Virus sample. Sorry, but I won't just hand over my life's work. You might hit the sample. That's it, all right. Okay, let's move out. William. Oh, my. Hold on, darling. I'm taking care of that bullet wound first. Stay here. Alpha team, have you retrieved the sample yet? Affirmative. We'll be at the rendezvous point in one minute. Roger. Are you telling me that he injected the G-Virus into his own body? The G-Virus has the ability to revitalize cellular functions. What, what, what was that? Something's wrong. Let's check it out. Over there! Shoot! Eat this, you freak! What is this thing? No! Hurry! Wh what is this thing? So those rats were the carriers of the virus? As a result of his virus-induced transmutation, William should have lost any prior memories he had as a human by now. I tried to save him, but I'm afraid it's already too late. But... And that's not even the entire story. Every G-Virus bioweapon, including William, has the ability to implant embryos into other life forms. That's why he's after Sherry. What are you trying to say? The bodies of individuals with non-related genetic coding are likely to reject the embryo. But since Sherry is his daughter, that possibility is non-existent. It's an inherent survival instinct. Ah! It's Sherry! You go that way. Run around to this hole in the wall over here and use the valve handle. This is the same valve handle that we picked up over in the police station. You want to use it over here to bring this platform down and then you're going to run over to the other side and use it again on the other hole. And then you're going to raise that platform back up. And that's all you really have to do for the valve handle. That's the end of the valve handle at this point. There are a couple of herbs over here. There's even flame rounds, and this is why I say you don't really have to pick up the flame rounds over on that guy as you're passing through the sewers, because by the time you pick up the other flame rounds, and these flame rounds, and the flame rounds that are already in your magic chest, you're going to have a stack of like 18 flame rounds, and you're pretty much set for the entire game, more or less. But these extra flame rounds that I have, you know, they give me a little bit more leeway to take out some things in the lab when I have to. 
So, you can combine those herbs to make a, you know, two herbs. <laughs> yeah. There's also a typewriter here if you have to save. So, this next part can be a little bit difficult if you try to do it with non-traditional or... Well, yeah, non-traditional strats. If you try to use knife only against it or something, it's doable, but it's really, really hard to pull off. It's way easier to just use it the gimmick way. This is essentially a gimmick fight. Equipped, I recommend just running away. Don't stick around. Don't have a chat with it. Just go over to this canister, make it come out of the wall, and then wait for the alligator to bite. Because after it does, well, fire off one shot, and well, you'll see what happens. D U N, baby. D E D. Dead. One shot only. You have to hit the switch on the wall before you can open the door, because this door locks for whatever reason. I don't know. After you have it open, though, you go over to Sherry, and she's going to have a medallion next to her. Be sure you grab that, because that's the first of two medallions that you need before you go through here. Wake up, Sherry. <sighs> My stomach... It hurts. Don't worry. You'll be fine. Come on. Let's go. Again, be sure you take that medallion. It's a key item. You need to have it in order to progress. When you're ready, go over to this platform and go through the ladder. And if you have the option to climb, that means that Sherry is going to follow you, so you don't have to worry about her too much. Sherry, as long as you have her re reasonably close, is going to be okay. It's not real, real. It's not a real hassle to have her with you as long as you wait for her a little bit. And Sherry is squatting down there. It's not that big of a deal because we're just running up here to grab this metal. And then we're turning around and running away. And once we get back down here, she'll be ready to go. You want to go around the catwalk over here, and we're going to go outside to this fan. Where we're going to use the valve handle once again. This is the last time we're going to use the valve handle. I said that the other time was going to be the last time when we rose the platform, but I was wrong about that. This is actually the last time. And now we got to go through the vent, and... <laughs> we'll be ready to go use these medals in our inventory, these medallions. Cross through the vent, and you'll be on the other side where you began the sewer portion of this game. Back where you got the first medallion. Or not the first medallion, that's Leon, but where you got the flame rounds. Yep. That little walk right over there is where you would have gotten the flame rounds. There's zombies in here now, and you don't will you don't want to dilly dally. Because they'll be coming for you, and if you dilly dally too long, they'll either bite you or they'll vomit on Sherry, and you don't want either one. Just get out of there, go straight, and once you get to the I don't even know what you call it, this the device on the wall. Face it and use both medallions. These are actually medallions from Resident Evil 1, believe it or not. Uh, these are what you use to get into the lab. Curiously enough, it's, well, it's what you use to get into the lab in both games. <laughs> how do you like that? It's kind of funny how that works out. I guess they really thought about that when they were making this, didn't they? Well, anyway, since she's close enough, you can just go through the door. She'll be alright. She'll follow you through. This is the part of the game where 
you're actually going to have to fight stuff while you have Sherry with you. Not before we cross over in the tram, though. But it'll be okay. Because, for the most part, you really don't have to do all that much, and also we have an abundance of flame rounds on us. So, over to the right here, you want to hit a switch, and that'll activate this tram that we're going to use. Just get on it, and once you get over to the other side, there will be a key on the ground that we're going to want to grab, because we're going to be going over to the lab anyway. And this key is going to have some extra grenade rounds for us that we're probably going to want to use. Right here. If you fire that flare, it'll make this key show up with a sparkle, but you can just go up against the wall and find it. And it saves you having to do the flare stuff. You don't have to grab the rounds that you get with this key, but I recommend it because it gives you a little bit more leeway. It makes it easier to complete the game. So we don't want to go over to the other side because the spark shot piece is over there. We just want to fire a grenade round right here at that zombie and head this way, go through the door. The spark shot is fine and all, but I don't really find it ought to be all that useful versus just acid rounds and flame rounds. They're, it's simpler, it's faster to use just those rounds. We can use another flame round to take out this guy, and then we can use this to get rid of this guy. And there's another guy over here who's going to get in our way. There's actually herbs over on the other side there that we can grab, but if we don't really need them, we can just go up the ladder here and move on to the boss fight that is coming up. And here's our save room before we go in here. You may want to throw down a save if you're not feeling confident. We can put away the box key for right now. We can put away the gun. We can put away everything except for flame rounds and maybe a heal or two if we really feel inclined. Going into this fight, we are going to have... We are going to have... 20 rounds. There's a first aid in this box over here. You may want to take that. If you're looking for the best possible score, you don't want to take it, but it's good to have a backup. And about the grenades, you can load as many of the same type of grenade into the grenade launcher as you need to. So that helps you save a lot of space. You have regular rounds there and flame rounds, you should take them both because the regular rounds are going to help you out a lot. The regular rounds are kind of like shotgun shells for Leon, where you can use those to take out all the non-essential stuff. You don't want to use them during a boss fight, probably, but for regular enemies, it's kind of a godsend. Getting rid of zombies is much easier with them. There's also going to be some flame rounds over here just inside. If we head over to the left at this, I guess, bathroom here, there's going to be flame rounds right there. So we've got 26 flame rounds. You can't see them. They're not shining like they really should be, but they're there. And we can load them in, and we are well stocked with flame rounds at this point we have a nice nice stack at this point you should feel pretty confident especially if you've collected all those flame rounds up till now we'll use the key in our inventory on this device out here and this I guess train should be ready to go Get yourself ready because we're about to do the boss fight. This particular boss is weak against flame rounds. But that doesn't mean he's a pushover. So you should try to keep your distance. Claire, my stomach. My stomach hurts. Hang in there, Sherry. My forehead's burning up. I've got to hurry before the embryos pupate. Go outside. And let's get down to business, guys. This is... Well, it'll be fine. You don't have to be worried. 
the flame grenades, you're gonna be okay. Well, here's William Birkin's, I guess, second form. I recommend getting one or two shots in before you do this, and you should probably run counterclockwise around him. Generally, for William Birkin, running counterclockwise is the best way to do this. I kind of just fired all my grenades at him and didn't even bother moving. I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Obviously it worked, but I took a little bit more damage than I really needed to doing it. Just to prove that, well, I got, you know, big balls and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, run counterclockwise, because on Birkin, it's always counterclockwise with him. Whereas Mr. Sherry. Oh. If you run counterclockwise around Birkin, then his swipes tend to miss you. Most of the time, not always. Mr. X, on the other hand, when you fight him, you want to run clockwise around him. And again, sometimes he hits you, sometimes not so much. Claire? Oh, you're finally awake. Isn't this... That's okay. You keep it. I'm sure it'll keep you safe. Thank you, Claire. Even though I'm an only child, neither of my parents ever spent much time with me because of their work. I grew up alone. But now that you're with me, I finally have someone to rely upon. Sherry. Rest here for a bit. I'll be right back as soon as I found the antidote for you. So over here on top of this cabinet is going to be, or refrigerator rather, is going to be an herb. There's also acid rounds on the counter over here. And you should grab those. Those are going to be, well, not for obvious reasons. We're going to use those during the final boss fight. And that's actually like, God, that's that's the third instance of acid rounds that we've seen in the entire game. This is why I say that if you can avoid using the acid rounds, you should really not use them until you have to. There's other instances of acid rounds throughout the game, but you have to go out of your way to get them. And it can be worth it if it's your first time playing, if you're just trying to get through it, but if you're trying to get things done a little faster, you don't want to be just wasting acid rounds all willy-nilly. So in the lab, run forward, run around this thing in the middle, and then go over to the blue side here, this blue door. Go forward and go through here, and then when you're inside, hang a left. And when you do that, there's going to be this frozen door over here that you're going to go through inside is going to be the fuse because we need to turn the power back on this place the power for the most part is kind of you know just off there will be a first aid spray on this barrel over here you probably want to get that just in case you know things aren't going so great the fuse case is right there put that in this uh panel over here the robot will do its work and build you a fuse this is what we're going to use in the middle of this place to turn the power back on, thankfully. I'm trying to imagine running a whole lab like this and... God, it's running on fuses. This place is held together by stitches and terrible underfunding. Strange experiments and terrible underfunding, more like it.
Go back through the door and go to the main middle area. Where you ran into the dark, dark center. And there you want to use the fuse. It's not really obvious unless you've done this before, but if you just run up this thing and put the fuse in there, yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, the fuse just goes straight into the center. It's crazy how's that, how that works. After you do that, go through the red door. And... At this point, you want to run forward a little off the left. And when you hit this panel here, the shutter will open and there will be a couple of, you know, plant monsters over here. I... would say that you can try to run past them, but... Part of the problem here is that you might get grabbed, and I didn't get poisoned here fortunately, but I did have to use a heal, which was not great. The flame rounds will take them down. Two flame rounds will put these monsters down. And honestly, it might be worth it to do it, because that's obviously a huge problem. If you run into some risky business, there's going to be a couple of herbs over here behind this plant monster. This guy's pretty slow. If you run behind him, he's going to take a moment to try and turn himself around, and it's not going to be super easy for him. Of course, you know, usually that doesn't happen. Of course it happened here because I'm playing the game and recording it. <laughs> so that's that's fun. Thank you for that. I really needed that. Uh, that sort of stuff always happens when you record these things. Like, most of the time when you just play the game and you're not recording it, Everything will be just fine. The moment you start recording it, yeah, they'll they'll put on their big boy pants and start feeling, you know, feeling like big men. I recommend just like running there. And uh, if you're lucky, you'll get past all that. This is this is a terrible terrible section here because these monsters here, these liquors. They can stun lock you, and it's really hard to run around them if they get in your way. That was really, really, really rough there, and... Well, fortunately, we were able to get out of there. So, wash yourself in there. I would just run past the one liquor that comes down from the ceiling, run past it, and then hang a left, try to run past the other one, and then, ideally, the other one will not get in your way too much as you try to circle around him. Like I say, uh... Sometimes you just run into this stuff and you do the best you can. If you have a green herb, there's a red herb over there that you can mix it with to make a, a full heal. And... I would like to... Try this again at some point, I think, to have a little bit more of a cleaner run. That key that we had, that key that we picked up off the ground, that's what we use it for to pick up those grenade rounds. And we switched them out here because we don't want to deal with more nonsense in this lab than we have to. This lab is actually chock full of zombies. So go ahead and clear the way. Just get them out of there because they are blocking your way and the camera angles in here are a little inconvenient. The key that you need is going to be on that counter over there. We have to grab that. That's the key item that we need in here. We'll be coming back to this lab, but for right now, this key is all we need. If you pick it up, just get the hell out of there. Don't spend too much time in there. We cleaned up pretty good, honestly. That Those grenades were definitely worth it for... The lack of grief that we now have to endure. <laughs> ah. Annette! You killed William. I'll never forgive you for that. Wait! I've just prepared a sample of the G virus. And this time, no one will take it from me. This is the most significant piece of research my husband has ever left in my hands. Stop it! Sherry's in serious trouble. William implanted her with his embryos. There's no telling when they'll pupate. And if that happens, then Sherry won't... won't... What? <laughs> William.
him. Still alive. He's getting stronger with each skin he casts off. Sh Sherry! Tell me what I need to know. How can I save Sherry? I have detailed information. Everything you need to know to prepare the antidote is right here. <laughs> Save my daughter, and tell her I'm sorry I wasn't a better mother. Tell her I love her, Sherry. Uh. Annette! The self-destruct sequence has been activated. Repeat, the self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. I don't know why I waited back there. I think I thought that the cutscene was still going that Claire would go there herself, but obviously that's not the case. We have to go make the vaccine now. And boy, that's uh, going to be a little bit of a hassle, but we'll be okay doing it. What we want to do is bring all the heals that we can for this part because we're not coming back to the item box. So watch yourself going back into this room over here because the liquors are still going to be there. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to pick up some herbs. Because we kind of need herbs after taking all those hits. What you should do here to get those herbs is wait for this guy to start walking. He's going to have a friend that's going to be walking behind him. Don't go quite yet. Yeah, you see that guy right over there? He's coming. What you're going to want to do is, if you want those herbs, because this is particularly dangerous, you want to wait for him to walk over to that wall right there. Don't go quite yet. Don't go quite yet. And then once he gets over far enough right there, you can start walking a little bit and he won't be alerted. If he does get alerted, that's your cue to just try your best and get out of there. But this way, that liquor will go over into the hallway. You'll pick up one herb, two herbs, and there's three herbs here that you can take. If you can, you'll want to grab them all. I decided to use one to get myself back into fine. That's... It's up to you how many herbs you want to use or whether you want to start mixing them. And I tried to get past that guy. Boy, that didn't really work. I'm taking all kinds of swipes here, which is, you know, great for me. But anyway, one herb there brought me back into fine again, and we're going to leave. And that's the last we're going to see of those guys, because when we come back, they're going to be zombies. Go back up the ladder. Don't be worried by all this, like, music, all this stuff that's happening in the background. No. And when you come back up the ladder here, also watch out for that plant monster, because if you linger too long, he'll get you. But turn and then run to the door. Don't run forward at him, he'll grab you. And then when, to get past that guy, just run over to 
the wall on the other side there and hug it as you're running past him and you'll run past him every time. Go back into the blue hallway, go through this door, and straight forward is going to be the door we're going to have to go through to make the back scene. And prepare yourself for this room because it's rough. There's going to be about five zombies in here. There's going to be five zombies in here. And I recommend just using grenades to take care of business. You, the vaccine card is over here on this card over here. The vaccine cartridge is right there. There's more grenades right there if you want them. Just blow these guys up. You really don't need to grab the other rounds there because you have enough grenade rounds right now to finish the game. But use your regular rounds on these guys. Don't use your flame rounds. Don't use your acid rounds or anything like that. Once, it, once it's all clear, go ahead and place the cartridge. And then take out the other guy if you need to, because he'll probably be in the way. A lot of zombies in the way here, guys. After that, go ahead and operate the machine here. This panel on the wall will, will make the back scene do its thing. And then you want to take the disc that's on the cart. Because that disc on the cart... I decided to go ahead and take the grenade rounds because, for safety reasons, I felt better doing it. I really didn't need to, but I did it anyway. The, the ammo disc that we need to get into the boss room is going to be right there on that little cart there. And I used the herb to clear up some space. Also, I'm in full health right now, so I feel better now. And now I've got the base vaccine. What we need to do with this is go back downstairs to the lab, now that we have all this. What I'm doing here, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm, I, I guess I got a little confused here because I thought I was going to get the vaccine. I forgot that I needed to go back downstairs to the lab. And now I've, I've kind of remembered that I had to do that. Yeah, you make a few mistakes here and there while you're playing these things. It happens. But hopefully if I decide to record this again that we won't run into that problem again. Anyway, go back over and return to the red hallway. A lot of backtracking in Resident Evil 2. Just be aware of that. <laughs> You've probably already picked up on that, but yeah, a lot of backtracking in this one. Just, in this hallway, hug, hug the other wall this time running through, because his back is going to be exposed to you. And that way you can just run around and not be bothered by him. And that makes life a lot easier. And here you can just get to the ladder before he has a hope of doing anything. It's really easy to get past that guy. Really, really easy. Now, when you go back in this hallway, there will be zombies, so be careful here. And watch yourself. Have your regular rounds ready. They're going to be blocking your way. Case in point. Boom. There's that guy. Go ahead, just get rid of him. Of course, he decided to lunge because, you know, they do that. And then there's this guy. If you hit them just right, they're gonna blow to pieces, so that's pretty cool. I am playing the DualShock version of this on PS1, so they do tend to have some more, like, explosions and stuff. You see a lot of that in this one, and it's pretty cool. You can use the disc while you're here if you want to, but we can't leave quite yet. We do have to get the back seat. And to do that, we are, I, I did get the acid rounds ready, and I don't know why I ran in here. I, once again, I've forgotten that I have to go into the lab. It's little things like that. But I remembered just then, oh, oh, that's right, I have to go back into the lab and get the vaccine ready. So now we're going to run through this hallway, go back where a net, you know, kick the bucket, and then we got to go back into the lab and place the, ca the cartridge so we can get the proper vaccine. We really didn't need to go in here, because there's nothing in the inventory box that we need other than maybe whatever heals that we want. But, unless you're running short on heals, you, you, you don't really need to. I did take a bite back there, so I guess, I guess I understand why I would. Since we cleared out a couple of zombies, a few zombies in here last time, it should be pretty easy getting to the vaccine machine over in the corner. 
This machine is where we put the cartridge. There's nothing more to it. It's all we have to do here. Now we're ready to go. It's time to fight the boss fight. Go back through this door. Leave the lab. Pass a net. And we have to go show her husband who's boss. Now, this boss fight is going to be pretty, pretty tough. Like I say, you want to run clowner... Excuse me. Counter, not clowner. Jeez. You want to run counterclockwise around him. Birkin, for some reason, is always counterclockwise. As far as I'm aware, because on his second form, I know on, I know on his second, well, on his first form is counterclockwise. On his second form, I don't know because I haven't really tried running around him quite yet as Claire. But it is something to try out in the future, I think. But anyway, into the final boss room we go. To start the boss fight, across the room, five minutes until detonation, and hit the panel on the on the right side. So there is a countdown here, so we don't want to dilly dally for too long while we're fighting him. As soon as we activate this platform, Birkin will show up. At this point, this is where you want to use the acid rounds. Now, I decided to run clockwise around him. I don't know. He, he does pretty big damage here. Every time he attacks you, he'll pretty much put you in caution. And there's really not a lot of room to run around. So, if you do, if you do decide to run around him, it's probably best done in the center of the room where there's a little bit more open space. When you're aiming manually, this can be a little bit difficult to manage, but just do the best you can here, and once you hit him with enough acid rounds, he'll change forms. Right there, after a handful of acid rounds, he changed forms. The second form is going to be particularly nasty, so you'll want to try to keep your distance from him. And what I recommend doing, since we're out of acid rounds, we used all six of them on the first form, switch to the flame rounds. This is our backup. And what he's doing here, he's... He is going to jump. You want to try to run as he's jumping so that he doesn't jump on you. It's not great when that happens. Because it does do quite a bit of damage. It only brought us down to yellow caution, though, so... It's not that bad, but he does a bite, this bite attack here. This bite attack actually does a, a fair amount of damage, too. That puts us immediately in yellow caution. This He does a lot of high damage attacks. And because of the camera angles, it's kind of hard to judge where, he's, where he is. So you want to just try the best you can and take every opportunity you can while you're running away to turn around and fire around at him. Easier said than done, as always. He gave me enough time here that I felt like I could unload on him. And now, I'm kind of in caution here, so I'm not sure about this run. But, I fired enough rounds, he gave me the leeway, and he's done. That's broken. When you're fighting Birkin, you just want to look for openings to take a shot at him. And also, you know, you want to bring the heals with you so that, you know, it helps to get a little lucky. <laughs> Luck isn't all of it, though. Pay attention to certain things, like when he jumps on the walls or he jumps on the door. And try to get underneath it and run away from him. 
and leave yourself an opening. Once you get to the end of the hall after the fight, the game's over. Congratulations, that is Resident Evil Player A, no save, manual aiming. Thank you for joining me for this run, everybody. I appreciate you being here with me. And I hope to see you again on the next one. Have yourselves a great rest of your day, guys. A great night. Whichever. And I'll see you next time, everyone.